right, so what does CMX2 actually do? Well, the main premise is to find color palettes from other images and apply them to yours and then tweak and adjust to really find, you know, the exact look that you're after. So let's do just kind of a straightforward demo, something you can get up and running in seconds. All right. So I've got this shot here, which have, you know, my edit is done. It's clean, but I have just out of camera color, a little bit of color correction and raw, but that's about it. So let's say we want to add a grade to it. What can we do? Well, there's obviously a lot of different things you can do in Photoshop, but let's say you're inspired by other images. Okay. So here's a shot here, this portrait. I took that like seven or eight years ago. Here's a crazy image I found on via Google. Same thing here. Nice beach shot and another sort of, that looks almost like a digital painting. I think it is. Does not matter where the palette comes from. Doesn't matter where the color source comes from. Let's go for something a little more obvious. Here's some warm tones in this portrait. By the way, that's a very low resolution image. All of these are. It doesn't really matter as long as you have the colors in there. CMX2 will do a great analysis and determine how to recreate that palette to apply like a gradient map wash over your image. So let's start with this warm image here. What do we do? Well, we go to CMX2. Bottom left button is our analyze image button. So while, while we're on that one, we hit analyze and let it do its thing. And then it comes back and we have a palette. As you can see, it pretty much is, you know, obviously representative of that palette. Now on top, we have samples and we can choose how many samples we want to try to work with to create this gradient. This gradient on the bottom shows our output, if you will, because we can do a lot of things to change, which we'll talk about. But for the moment, as you can see, this palette is a perfect representation of that one. Okay. So now without changing anything, we're going to leave it on default. Let's go over to the image in question that we want to modify. Okay. And while back on CMX2 panel, we go to the second button, apply gradient. Boom. And now we've applied that gradient. Again, these are all in the default settings and everything can be changed. But as you can see, we'll turn it off and on. We took a warm tone with a lot of deep blacks in it. You know, there actually has a slight blue tone. You probably can't see that in the video, but it has a slight blue tone in the shadows. And then look, we've applied it over here. It went from kind of out of camera looking and now it sort of reflects the vibe of this one. Now, while you're exploring color, you can just kind of tuck that one to the side and let's go with something more muted because when we add all these blue tones in this beach shot, it's probably just going to kind of work against all the warm tones on my image, which could be what I want. I don't know. But here, while this image is selected, analyze it. We have a new palette. Great opportunity for me to show you that, as you can see, we have this one sort of teal color in the palette. Um, in the gradient, right in that luminosity range where it creates a little bit of a band. See that? Okay, so that's where the smoothness button comes in. Even before we apply it, we can smooth it out. You see how that actively blends it? That'll help when you apply, especially if you apply it heavily or using different blend modes, which we'll talk about in other videos. But let's go ahead and just something like that. Click back on the image in question and hit apply. And as you can see, we have like some blue tones. So I went from that to that, kind of cooled it off. If you really look, you can see it reflects the vibe of that Okay. In a nice gentle way. We also have the opacity. So if I come back to here, I can increase the intensity of that. Again, it's on a default blend mode. We have videos about that, but as you can see, it increases that look from that to that. Let's say you want cool tones. Maybe you don't know if you want cool tones, right? What about if you want like these cool jungle tones? There's a lot of things happening in here and there's a bright red as well. Let, let's go ahead and select that one and analyze. At the moment, we don't see the red, but I bet if, if we increase the samples, there it is. There's that red. Okay. Why? Because it knows that red is there, but on the analysis that CMX2 did, it knows that red isn't a high priority color. It does know that it's a high contrast color because the saturation is so different. So it will give it to you if you choose a lot of samples. Like, okay, now it makes sense in nine samples, but in less than that, it's not going to focus on that red. But once you bring that red up, this is a great example for me to show you. Yes, I can smooth it out if I want to blend that red into that. Okay. Yes, I can. Or if I just don't want it, I can simply click it. And now the red is gone. Okay. If I can bring it back too by clicking it again, but as you can see, we can just remove that. I'm going to put it back on and blend that red in just a little bit. Go back to our image and hit apply. Okay. And now we have sort of the jungle vibe being applied there. Once again, opacity, we can dial it into whatever we feel might look good. These are just the basics, by the way, to give you an idea of what's possible. Okay. See that? 
just kind of dial it into something good. That works pretty well. Okay, now what about a wild palette like this? Okay, let's go ahead and scan that one. Let's say we put it, by the way, you notice how when I scanned it, CMX2 brought it down to eight samples because it thought, okay, based on its analysis, that's probably the better option. I'm gonna ramp it up to 10 for a minute because let's say you have this wild palette. All kinds of colors have been selected. This gradient is banded like crazy because of all the different hues in it, right? And that is where the smoothness comes in. We can blend that really, really smooth. And we get like a, almost like you took all the paints, if you will, of this one, blended it all together by luminosity range and smoothed it together. And now we have the essence of this shot, this digital art. We go to our shot and we apply it, okay? It's not all that different but we get the basic essence. You're not gonna be able to necessarily recreate this crazy rainbow look, I guess you could, but it may not be what the shot needs. Certainly not this, you know, editorial swimwear shot, okay? So while we're here, I've applied it, it looks pretty good, but I have a level slider, which I can immediately just brighten or darken the gradient to give it exactly, you know, in case it's a little bit dark, I can brighten it up and I can just choose the essence of that. And what's great about applying gradient maps, at least with the default of soft light, um, and overlay and some others that it adds a nice tonal contrast. Okay. So you see without any advanced settings or tweaking or anything like that, I can open up sample images that I either grab uh, via Google or old images of your own that you like, or wherever you get them does not matter. You can even take pictures on your cell phone and put them into Photoshop. And then you can scan those palettes and you can start applying them immediately and getting really, really cool results. And that is just the tip of the iceberg.